thunder of jets in an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... Ah! A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle, and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. Bullwinkle, the show's about to start. I'm coming as fast as I can. Wait to the people. Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph. The thief, John Smith. But your name is Bullwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. Sure, there's always room for one more. It looks like journey's end at last for our heroes. Seeking the magic mooseberry bush, a plant that produces a secret rocket fuel ingredient, our heroes have traveled to Potsylvania, the only place in the world where mooseberries still grow. However, as they approached the dock, they saw a rather unusual reception committee. Look, Rock, they're greeting us with open arms. Yeah, but look what's in their hands. I don't like this, Bullwinkle. Our friends didn't know that the reception committee was really waiting for Boris Badenov, their arch enemy. But then neither did Boris. Ah, it's good to be back among old friends, Natasha. If those are friends, I'd hate to meet your enemies. There must be some mistake. Hello, it is I, Boris Badenov, your number one pin-up spy. I think your rating has dropped, darling. They couldn't do this to me. Get me central control. Hello, fearless leader is Boris. Boris who? Boris Badenov. Must be some mistake. We got a new spy named Badenov. You do too. It's me. We used to have Nebish named Badenov, but he was executed yesterday. What? It says so in paper. But, but, but I'm Badenov. Oh, my mistake. I pick up tomorrow's paper. <laughs> Oh, well, what's one day? Hello? Hello? I've been cut off. Uh, you're not kidding, darling. How could they do this to me? After 20 years of lying, cheating, double-crossing and backbiting, they don't like me anymore. Come on, you! We know you're in there! Gee, Rocky, you suppose they mean us? Well, I don't know who else they mean. See, why don't we check with our next-door neighbor, Sir Thomas Lippenboris, millionaire yachtsman? He's well. And our two friends headed right for the spy's cabin. If I could just get to central control, I could explain everything. But how are you going to get past the mob on the dock? Oh, yeah. Who's afraid of a little mob? <coughs> I am. They come for me. Who's there? Oh, it's just us, Lady Alice. Oh, we were just wondering if you could give us some tips on how to get along with the natives. Yeah, they seem pretty restless. But of course, old Bean. There's a mob of people out there, Sir Thomas. Yeah, and they're after us. They, uh, they after you? Oh, yes, of course, old chap. They jolly well don't like foreigners, you know. Yankee go home, all that sort of thing. But darling... Shut up your mouth, Lady Ellis. Now, you chaps got only one chance to get into country. How's that, Sir Thomas? Oh, well, it's a disguise. Disguise? Certainly. Step this way. And behind the screen, Boris quickly disguised our heroes. Oddly enough, when he was finished, they looked remarkably like an undisguised Boris and Natasha. There. A bit of all right. What, what? This mustache tickles. Oh, don't worry. It won't tickle long. And Boris led our heroes to the gangplank. Well, cheerio and pip pip all chapis, and good luck. You'll need it. Goodbye, Sir Thomas. Gee, he's a good old millionaire yachtsman. Look, Fedor, he's them? Let's see, Badenov is short, check. Mustache, check. Dark glasses, check. Travels with beautiful lady spy, check. Who oh boy, she's knock out. Dig those crazy earrings. Okay, grab them. Uh-oh, Rocky, 
Something must have gone wrong. Cheer up, Boomwinkle. Maybe they're taking us to meet the mayor. I don't think that's the key to the city he's holding. Don't miss our next exciting episode, Ax Me Another, or Heads You Lose. <laughs> Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Again? Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! Ah! Wrong hat. I take a seven and a half. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. This is the story of Dick Whittington, who lived a long, long time ago in a country called England. Dick was very, very poor. He lived in the village of Poppin Full of Squares, and the townspeople had two pastimes, laughing at Dick <laughs> and singing of London. Oh, London town is made of gold, made of gold, made of gold. London town is made of gold, my fair lady. The townspeople chanted this ditty constantly, day in and day out. Taking everything into consideration, they were quite foolish people. So one day, Dick, feeling quite cheeky, said, You are quite foolish people. And left for London town to tip loose a few cobblestones of gold so that he might have the last laugh on the people of Poppin Full of Squares. Ah, uh, what are you doing? I am loosening a cobblestone of gold. Cobblestones of gold? This is London, isn't it? Yeah. Then this is a cobblestone of gold. Well, uh, if this is London town, as you say, then most certainly that is a cobblestone of gold. However, if it does happen to be an ordinary cobblestone, here is my card. Dick rushed off with the cobblestones he had pried loose, but found that he could purchase neither food nor drink with them. Perhaps now I can be of assistance. My card. When I start taking advice from a cat, I knew they were rocks anyway. Here now, here now! Vandals, robbers! Oh, oh, thank you, young man. It's getting so you can't walk down the street at night anymore. But come along. You must have dinner with me. In the course of the evening, Dick was offered a job in Mr. Fitzwarren's household. It didn't pay much, but it was better than shipping up rocks. So, Dick took the job of errand boy. Hello, my name is Miss Alice. Oh, oh, oh. Dick decided that he'd be very happy in Mr. Fitzwarren's household, and he would too, except for one thing. Mr. Fitzwarren was sailing for another kingdom on an extremely important mission. Everyone in the household was giving Mr. Fitzwarren a going-away gift. Alas, poor Dick, he had nothing to give him, and he wanted to make a good impression on Miss Alice. Well, show me the gift, Cat. How are you looking at it? Mainly me. So a good impression was made on both Mr. Fitzwarren and Miss Alice. The queen of the kingdom to which Mr. Fitzwarren was hurrying had named their kingdom London too. And upon finding out that there already was a London, the queen became very unhappy. Upon seeing the queen unhappy, the prime minister became unhappy, and then the parliament. And when the parliament becomes very unhappy, everybody becomes very unhappy, and eventually everybody looked like the unhappy queen, even the king. To solve this crisis was Mr. Fitzwarren's mission, which became even more of a crisis when he found his face changing too. The Queen was fit to be tied. It's all your fault. If you hadn't named that city of yours London, this never would have happened. Now we can't call our kingdom our own or our faces. Uh, 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 uh. Not so fast. All is not lost. My card. But I don't want a face. I have a face. But, uh, just look at this face. Mm, it's a beautiful face, but it's not my face. That face is a happy face. Your face is a sad face. You're unhappy because you cannot name your kingdom London. When you are happy, the happy face will be yours. But what can I do? I so love the name London. And you shall have the name Nodnall, which is London spelt backwards. And so the name was changed to Nodnoll, and the Nodnollians regained their happy faces, and the queen became the most beautiful woman in the kingdom. We are indebted to you and your cat 
Four ships filled with gold are yours for helping us. So, Mr. Fitzwarren and the cat said goodbye to the Nodnolians and returned to London Town and gave Dick the money. Right on my foot! For Mr. Fitzwarren knew that the money would be in the family anyway, for the next day, Dick married Miss Alice and called her Miss Alice from that day forward. And she called him Mr. Whittington. Which all their friends found a little stuffy. But with all that money, <laughs> who cared? The following spring, Dick became Lord Mayor of London, and so had the last laugh on the village of Poppin' Full of Squares. Heh, <laughs> heh. In the village of Poppin' Full of Squares, the people never sang their song of London Town. Well, Governor, you'd, you'd hardly expect us to sing London Town is full of rocks. And never again did they laugh at Dick Whittington or anything else, for that matter. But... The story does have a happy ending, though. For the next year, ice cream was invented, and everyone lived happily ever after. And now, once again, to give you an insight on his outlook, Mr. Nodal. Hello, low IQers. Today's discussion concerns how to tame lions and pick up a little scratch on the side of your head. <clears throat> In order to tame a lion, one needs four items. A whip, a gun, a chair, and a tame lion, like Teddy here. <clears throat> Got up on the wrong side of the cage, didn't we? First, we proceed to test the whip. This is done by snuffing out a candle that sits on the head of a small flying squirrel. You sure you know what you're doing, Mr. Nora? <laughs> Haven't missed yet. We are now prepared to face the lion. Are you ready, Teddy? <laughs> now for my next subject, how to run the four-minute mile in 30 seconds with whip and chair. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to show us how to tame a lion? Not with Teddy being as ready as he is. Oh. Come on! Very well. I shall tame him with hypnotism. Teddy, look into my eyes. No, I am the master. You are the slave. You are in my power. Now I shall demonstrate the most dangerous feat of all, putting my head into Teddy's mouth. Teddy! That's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Nordahl. Hello again, Peabody here. And I'm Sherman, Mr. Peabody's boy. Today, Sherman and I will travel back to the days when the Red Man roamed the West. Set the way back for the year 1875, Sherman. And the place? The Black Hills of South Dakota, where we'll join forces with the 7th Cavalry under the command of General George Armstrong Custer. As usual, Sherman and I made an instantaneous transition. We arrived just as Custer completed the interrogation of a sentry. Now, just what makes you think you saw an Indian? This arrow on my shoulder, sir. It weren't there when I went on duty. Oh, is that an arrow? I thought it was a tie pin. It's an arrow, sir, same as all the other sentries has got. You mean they've all been hit in the shoulder? All except Curly. He ain't Curly no more. Hmm. This calls for immediate action. Assemble the men. Oh, and do do something about that arrow, son. Makes your uniform look sloppy. Seconds later, the entire command stood at attention before their general. Men, there's an ugly rumor going around there's Indians in the neighborhood. Now, we all know what's got to be done. we got to go out and track them down. But, sir, we all have weekend leave so we can see the Army-Navy game. Well, all right. I'll go out and look for the Indians. Pardon me, General, but Mr. Peabody and I could go with you. Know anything about Indians, son? Only that they're in the American League. Ha, 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 that's what I like, a sense of humor. <laughs> All right, we'll leave at dawn. It is dawn, sir. So it is, so it is. All right, we'll leave now, American League. <laughs> 
Four hours later, our three-man patrol halted the search and surveyed the barren territory. Still no signs of Indians, General. Yeah, but they're tricky, son. Never know where they are. Good thing you boys is out with me, otherwise you might walk right into a trap. You mean, like this one? Hmm. Must have made a wrong turn somewhere. What white man want in Indian village? Well, it's a little cold over at the fort, and we thought, Chiefy, we might borrow some blankets. Yellow hair got him poor sense of humor. I think what General Custer is trying to say is that the United States government would appreciate it if you and your tribe would return to the reservation. Red man, cancel reservation. Go on warpath. Well, if that's the case, then I'm putting the whole bunch of you under arrest. Uh, how many of you are there? Got him 5,000 warriors. Well, I could take some of you in now and come back for the rest of you later in the week. How'll that be? You, my prisoners, we attack them Kansas City in morning, then come back and kill you. Do you think he means it, Mr. Peabody? I'm sure he's in dead earnest, Chairman. However, don't give up hope. Uh, Chief, I suppose you'll have your customary feast before going into battle. Oh, red man never make a war on empty stomach. Sitting Bull said that. Good. Then I'll have the pleasure of cooking for you. Say there, you got him away with skillet? You mean you haven't heard of Peabody's prolific pastries? After getting the chief's approval, I sent General Custer and Sherman to pick every wildberry they could find. Fifty baskets, Mr. Peabody. Is that enough? It will do nicely, Sherman. I then proceeded to whip up a huge amount of pie crust batter. One hour later, I was the proud parent of 1,293 wildberry pies. Pies look heap good. Injun, eat them now. By all means, chief. Eat them to your heart's content. Say, look, Peabody, I like to eat as much as the next man. But don't you think we ought to fight these fellers instead of feeding them? I am fighting them, General. By morning, these Indians will be in no condition to go on the warpath. You see, wild berries cooked at a certain temperature produce a specific effect when eaten. Makes you sick? Sleepy, General. Hopelessly and irretrievably sleepy. Sure enough, no sooner were the pies consumed than the entire village was rendered hors de combat. <laughs> The next day, the 7th Cavalry took the sleepy tribe in tow and escorted them back to their reservation. Well, I'll be seeing you, boys. Heard there's a rumor there's three or four engines running around the Little Bighorn. Think I'll run over and check it out. Little Bighorn? Wasn't that the site of Custer's last stand? Definitely not, Sherman. Custer's last stand is right over there. By the way, do you prefer mustard or catsup on your hot dogs? the good citizens of Pottsylvania are extending Rocky and Bullwinkle a real Pottsylvanian welcome. For Boris and Natasha disguised our heroes as, guess who, Boris and Natasha. Then under orders from Central Control, the boys have been arrested and hustled toward a sinister platform. Hop! But you don't understand. We're friendly. We're not. Hop! Come on, Bullwinkle. Where are we going? You heard the man. Up! Meanwhile, the real Boris and Natasha had escaped from the ship and made their way through the city to the underground headquarters of Central uh, Control. Hmm, they fixed up the place since I was here last. You, fearless leader, where are you? Right behind you, Benjamin. Eleven, twelve, thirteen steps. Rocky, that's liable to bring bad luck if we're not careful. Now hear this. You, Boris and Natasha, are hereby condemned. Boris? Natasha? Oh, forevermore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What is? You've mistaken us for somebody else. Sure, we're in disguise. Disguise? Yep. See, this is just a wig I got that comes, mm, that comes right there. Mm. Uh-oh, my wig is stuck, Rock. My mustache, too. Sure enough, Boris had fastened their disguises on with permanent glue. Proceed with the proceedings. Meanwhile, at Central Control... Well, speak up, Badinov. Don't let the boys make you nervous. <laughs> Who's nervous? You're making terrible mistakes. Nonsense. We made only one mistake here in 20 years. What was that? We hired you. What did I do? Nothing. That is the trouble. 
Did you bring back rocket formula? No, but... Moose berry bush? No, but... Moose berries? No, but... Moose? No, but... Go ahead, boys. Wait, did he? I mean, yes. Yes, what? Yes, sir? I mean, what did you bring back? Moose, I brought back moose. Where is he? Still on duck. Turn on viewer, Anastas. See? There he is now. You fool! He is about to be executed. No, uh, wait just a minute, fellas. Let's not lose our heads. Don't worry, sweetheart. Only one of you loses head. Your little friend Boris, we push off cliff. Oh, that's better. We are always polite. Ladies first. But at that instant, Rocky launched himself off the cliff and down into space. Catch him. He's ruining the execution. No, I can fly. Oop. Oh, boy, Rocky. Here he comes again, Doc. Tell me, Fedor, it says anything about Bedenov can fly? Not a word. Could be we made a mistake? Could be, but let's don't hang around to find out. Well, looks like execution is off. We got Moose. Now we put him to work for us, old buddy. You mean I'm not out of job? Of course not, dear boy. Was all mistake. You mean I get same old salary? Of course. Fifty grickles a month and all you can steal. Oh, boy. Plus fringe benefits. Fringe benefits? Yes. We don't shoot you. Back on the dock, a suspicious crowd watched as Bullwinkle and Rocky tried to get their disguises on. How you doing, Rocky? Gee, I thought it'd be years yet before I started shaving. Well, I guess you really are tourists. Howdy, welcome to Potsylvania and come along. Thanks, and where are we going? Where else? To jail. Jail? 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 This is a Potsylvanian howdy? Don't miss our next episode. The Pen Pals are Rock Hockey Rocky. Just enough left to tell him who the sponsor was. You got the credits, Bullwinkle? All on this itty bitty card. Ooh. Right. Bye now. See you next time.